In this video, we will explore the function of the pancreas, its anatomy, where it's located in the body, and what is its shape, and what are its different parts, as well as the symptoms associated with pancreatic disease. In the first part, is the simple sketch of the organs in the upper abdomen associated with the pancreas on the right side in the body high up in the abdomen is the liver the main function is to produce bile it has many other functions the bile comes down these two tubes into the main bile tube the bile tube it has a connection a bag next uh, connected to it called the gallbladder and the bile then comes down the bile tube traversing through the pancreas and then emptying into the small bowel there's a gullet over here connected to the stomach. The stomach churns the food, very early digestion in the stomach, and it comes down into the small bowel. Our organ of interest is this flat organ called the pancreas lying behind the stomach. And it has a tube going through its length called the pancreatic tube. And one of the main functions of the pancreas is to produce enzymes that digest the food. And these enzymes are carried by this tube towards the duodenum. It has other function, the endocrine function as well, and we will talk about that in a little bit. This diagram shows the exocrine function of the pancreas, i.e. production of the enzyme, and how it is organized, as well as the endocrine function. So let's just talk about the production of enzymes, the pancreatic juice. So you can see these tiny tubes connected to the main pancreatic tube, they all have these arrows indicating the direction of the flow of the pancreatic juice towards the main pancreatic duct. And this duct then propels it towards the small bowel. It is coordinated with the food arriving from the stomach so that it catches the food so that the process of digestion can begin. You can see the bile tube bringing bile at the same time and bile the production of bile also has, has triggers uh, connected to the food. And you can see how these are laid out, these tiny, tiny tubes connected to bunches of, uh, of tissue and different cells that produces these enzymes or chemicals. Now you may have noticed different colored nubbins uh, called eyelids of Langerhans, uh, and these are based on the on the gentleman who discovered these first. Now these are all together a different group of uh, cells and they produce hormones. The hormones are different because their action is well away from where they are produced. So you can see these little tiny dots denoting that these hormones or chemicals are picked up by blood and channeled into the main vein and taken away for the blood to deliver it to where their action is required around the body. And there are several different kinds of cells within the eyelids of Langerhans, uh, each producing a different hormone. In this slide, we can see the separation between pancreatic juice that I showed you that was going through into the main pancreatic tube, producing proteases, amylase, lipases and what does that mean it basically means enzymes that break the protein down into, into its constituent amino acids amylase and other group of enzymes breaking down the carbohydrates uh, finally down into the simple sugars and lipases um, causing fat breakdown but for the lipases to act in a effective manner they need bile so that the fat is suspended in a way that lipases can act. Now let's look at the hormones. Now I told you that hormones are, are different in a way that their action is further away. So the most important one uh, for our purpose is insulin. And insulin, what it does is it, it reduces the, the blood glucose level by removing it from the blood and it stores sugar for when it might be required at a later time and people who either do not produce enough insulin or where the effect of insulin on the tissue is not, it is not adequate, uh, unfortunately develop diabetes and that is a, a, a symptom of a potentially a pancreatic disease as well. There are several other hormones. Glucagon has an 
action exactly opposite to insulin it actually increases blood sugar and the trigger for gluco glucagon to be secreted into blood is when the blood sugar levels are quite low several other hormones somatostatin gastrin amylin which has various other functions important functions within the gi tract now moving on uh, to show you the anatomy from a surgical perspective uh, that separates the pancreas into a head of the pancreas which is towards the right uh, the duodenum is wrapped around the head of the pancreas and then there is a narrow part called the neck of the pancreas and the main portal vein taking blood from the gut towards the liver traverses just behind the neck of the pancreas and then there is the body of the pancreas where uh, some of the bulk of the pancreas lies apart from the head and then a, a smallish part towards the left called the tail of the pancreas. Now you can see in red the main pancreatic tube or the pancreatic tube. You can see the bile duct bringing bile in traversing through the pancreas and this is the duodenum. So in the final slide now we are trying to match the symptoms to what is going on within the pancreas to get a better understanding. For this purpose I've drawn a tumor in the head of the pancreas but chronic pancreatitis would give rise to very similar symptoms but for completely different reasons and I will explain. So let's say that this is a tumor to start with it was a small tumor and it caused the obstruction of the main pancreatic tube and that has that would have a significant effect on the patient because what it will do is it will stop the pancreatic enzymes from reaching the food and then you can guess what might happen to the food so the pancreatic enzymes are now not reaching and 90 percent of the digestion is down to the pancreatic enzymes so what happens what happens is that the proteins carbohydrate and fat the great majority of it go undigested and some of it is fermented and which means that the patient then develops statorrhea which is a specific type of diarrhea secondary to pancreatic disease and the main reason is not having enough pancreatic enzymes um, to digest the food so typically this is foul smelling it tends to float and it is pale in color and it is usually this first symptom that patients note when they go to their primary care physicians and it is not uncommon for patients to undergo assessment of their colon thinking that they have diarrhea when actually the problem is in the pancreas now if the fat if if the patients are not able to digest the food uh, they will have weight loss and loss of energy and not have nearly enough tolerance for exercise as they previously did. If patients are diabetic or have diabetes it will worsen and it is not uncommon for patients to develop new onset diabetes and that is because of the damage to the eyelids of Langerhans that I showed you in the previous slide due to the increased pressure within the pancreas the pancreas is not able to produce nearly enough hormones that it is required to and patients will either have worsening diabetes or may become diabetic. Now why should jaundice uh, develop? And jaundice occurs in case if the patient has a problem such as a tumor or a fibrosis if it's chronic pancreatitis in the head of the pancreas and it impinges on the pancreatic duct causing the stoppage to the flow of bile and the bile then pools in the liver the liver is not a repository for bile and it is then picked up by blood and there is increased uh, excretion of bile in the urine making the urine very dark the skin goes yellow and the eyes the sclera the whites of the eye turn yellow as well if you have any comments please do share them uh, and I hope you found this useful.